looks like we are alive. So let's see. Sure that everything is actually fine, but today what we're going to be doing is, is if I could figure out what's going on. Yes, there we go. All right. So today what we're going to be doing is testing our relatively newly soldered or mill maxed gaming keyboard, the Ducky 1-2 Mini, and we're gonna just be testing a bunch of switches on it. So what I have here are lube switches and then unlubed. So these are the Zeal, Zelios, I believe. Yes, these are the Zelios 72 or 76 gram uh, switches. They are unlubed and the linears and other tactiles. We already have the Glorious Pandas on the board. So there is that. That's the a little bit of difference there. Oh my god! Yeah, literally. When I start stream, that's what when it happens. The phlegm just reaches the inside of my nose, and I feel like gargling for no reason. But of course, I'm gonna get some water first. Make sure I am hydrated. Oh my god! But yes, but effectively, that's all we're going to be doing today. And for Opera GX, there we go. Why is it like that? I have to do this. There we go. That makes sense. Yeah, so we're going to be testing the keys and we're going to talk about quilt so effectively what we're doing. So where are we? Again, this is the Ducky 1 2 Mini. Now that it's Milmaxed, uh, we will be trying the Lube Cherry MX Browns. These are lubed ones. And Lube Linears. We already have Lube Glorious Pandas, which we're going to give a shot here. And we get the rest of the Lube Glorious Pandas. That way, when we swap them over, I can just move them in. Uh, I can move them to a different section. I'll put this over here. That way, we can get a visibility check on it. While grabbing. These guys. There. there you guys go. Be able to see everything. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, these are the Delta Hub Carpios. That's what these are. Yeah, these aren't bad. Uh, my issue with them is <laughs> if you're transferring from a hard surface, if this glass pad was yay wide, like actually from end to end wide i would like that much better than this really big glass mouse pad but honestly i don't know i don't know this is a cooler white than the table which is why it looks different and much wider too oh my god my nose one second Already went into the coat. Oh, all right. Woo. Oh. But yes, that's why I don't like these. They they are fine though in terms of actual wrist uh, as a an actual wrist rest. But let's actually get into what we're gonna be doing today. Again, sorry, my bad. All right, let's actually do a quote first. Actually, no, let's not do a quote first. Let's do time first, and then we'll do a quote right after. All right. Time that way, you get a baseline of how this sounds again. This is the what's it called? This is SA keycaps, by the way. These aren't your regular, yeah, these aren't your regular cherry style keycaps, so they are gonna sound a little different. But effectively, now that I can just move things around on this board, I would like to test how it sounds, and also maybe most likely, we're gonna actually try to do the tape mod on it and see how much different it sounds. All right, so. Let's go.
Oh, 70 words per minute. Oh, okay. So let's see here. Looks like I had a low of about 40 words per minute and a high burst of 112. That seems to be roughly around just over 110 and a general sustain of about 90 or so. Okay, now that we have a baseline of how that sounds if you're typing relatively fast, let's see what happens when you actually type something that you can actually read. Let's see, let's see here. All right, yeah, the way you wear here. Oh, okay. Sounds like a nice quote. We'll give this a shot and see what we're able to do. Again, this is the Ducky 1-2 Mini that has been mil-maxed with lubed Glorious Pandas, completely different company, and SA keycaps. No other modifications have been done to the board. Right. Boom. Not great. Unfortunately, I, I started off relatively well with 88, and then I just dropped off. It's so horrible. But yes, that's how it sounds. I don't hate how it sounds. Honestly, I don't hate how it sounds. Like, it sounds relatively solid for what it is. It's just a space bar sounds. A little off. That sounds solid. The mods sound relatively solid. Let's give it a shot here. All right, there we go. Ooh, right. The caps lock. I I didn't change the caps lock. These are pandas. And this is a different key. This is the bronze, not the coppers. So these are bronzes and they're unlubed because I decided not to remove that because I, I, it didn't work. So I'll leave it not working. And this is, again, the Glorious Pandas. The Glorious Pandas sound really full in comparison, but let's actually get into the quote as well. Let's see. All right, let's go into the watch replay section. Oh, yeah. 88, uh, lowest of 36 words per minute as well, by the way. Horrible accuracy. Okay. All right, this looks like one of those uh, love bomb kind of things. Um, or the memory of, of love. All right. Quote goes, and this, the source is, they can't take that away from me. Okay, it looks like a song. All right. The way you wear your heart, Heart, Jesus. Okay, the way you wear your hat, the way you sip your toe, your tea. Toes, Jesus. The way you sip your tea, the memory of all that. No, no, they can't take that away from me. The way you smile just beams. The way you sing off key. The way you haunt my dreams. No, no, they can't take that away from me. Yeah, no, you, no one can really take away a memory of someone in their mind, especially when it's under rose tinted glasses. I've had multiple memories from way back in the day. And yeah, there are times where I romanticize about how it could have been different if I did one different thing or whatnot. However, you always have it and it always haunts me and it's all horrible. I don't know why this person makes it look like it's great. It's horrible. Yeah, imagine your loved one just you know, dying and this is all, yeah, yeah, my loved one is dead, but you know, they can't take away the memory. That's true until you yourself croak, unfortunately. So yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> Morbid, but yes. 
Okay, let us move forward. What's going on? Uh, nine, nine. All right, cool. Just making sure. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. One more quote with the glorious pandas on the Ducky One Two Mini with Milmax sockets and SA keycaps. This is a combination keycap, by the way. This is actually Horizon, and I forget the other keycap set that it came with, but it's a nice dark green. The camera doesn't really do it justice because it looks almost black. Looking at here, you can even barely see the eye. But it is actually a little lighter than that, but it's not too much uh, lighter. But it looks like a nice combination. The colors kind of match. You can see that there's a difference in tone. Let me see if I can make it look better. There you go. And that's a little too bright. But yeah. That's what it is. All right. Let us move to quote number two, and then we can actually move into swapping these out. Actually, let's put this to the side. I changed my mind. All right. One more quote. ABC. I made so many mistakes there in that one section. Otherwise, I would have been over the hundreds. Jesus. Ah, oh, I hate that. I hate that so much. Such a small quote, too. All right. Let's uh, ABC. Um, is this the Jackson 5? I feel like this is the Jackson 5 kind of thing where you go ABC. One, two, three. You know, the, that, that that song but let's see what it says all right come on and love me just a little bit i'm gonna teach you how to sing it out come on let me show you what it's all about mm, no I, I don't really know love quotes unfortunately love quotes to me isn't the best thing in the world because it's like oh my god look 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 at how in love we are and all that but i'm, I'm like sitting here going about about what i don't i don't understand i don't i don't know what's going on like, <laughs> what are you talking about but yes, all right. Come on and love me just a little bit. I'm going to teach you how to sing it out. Come on, let me show you what it's all about. Yeah, no, a lot of people proclaim their love and they have serenades for it. Um, and I know with music in general, a lot of the music stuff tends to be about love songs or, you know, go out and having you know intercourse simply because that's what most humans do. Not all of them, but that's what most humans do. At one point or another, they're probably going to go through that. Therefore, they actually go and talk about it. Therefore, the total addressable market is very high. Therefore, that's what they talk about. But let's go and take this off real quick and change it for, I don't know. Let's go for linears. These are both glorious key, uh, key switches. So I think that the glorious key switches will be you'll you'll, show, you'll see the difference between linears and these are relatively silent. They're not silent silent. For example, these zeal switches. You can hear them a little bit. However, they're not actually clicky. They they don't have those very specific sounds. Right. I I was going to get clickies a little later, but that is what it is. Give me one sec. I got a thing that happened. Oh, okay, I just got a message saying to pay my bills. So I've got a new phone over, over you know, the whole Christmas period and all the holidays and whatnot. Oh, right, let me bring up some music. I just realized I totally forgot. Um, boom. Ooh. Sorry for that echo there. That must have sounded horrible. There we go. Awesome. Alright. 
So yeah, no, I actually got a new, maybe, maybe a little, a little too loud there. Yeah. All right. So I've actually gotten a new phone over the holidays and where did my keycap puller go? I literally had it about 10 seconds ago. What is wrong with me? Okay. So here's tool number one, which you're going to need. Where's tool number two that we do definitely need. Last stream, I've actually put these two together. I don't remember taking it out somewhere. Where did I? Oh, I did. I did. I I was looking at this board. And when I was using this board, I took it off just to see what key uh, key uh, what key switch I had underneath. And Jesus Christ. I, I don't know where I put it. <laughs> ever you ever do that? Oh there it is. Never mind. I found it. Woo! Alright. But yes, so we're gonna put that over there. Um, let's actually hide Opera for now. You don't really need that. That's a that's a kind of crappy quote, honestly. To be honest, I don't want to really leave that on screen. But yes, so effectively, I did get unplug. Sorry. Move that there. Move these here. I don't know. I might swap these for the coppers. That way, we can hear some clickies. Yeah, I might swap these for the coppers. There's no point in going from tactiles to tactiles. Um, these are silents. That way they're a little bit different. But uh, same thing, same. So, we're going to take that. Put this here. Put that around. Okay. And we'll see. Does, it, does that fit? That, will that will fit? No, that will fit all of the things. I'm going to move this away. Take away that cable this to the side actually let's put it over over here this makes sense over here on the side okay so we'll take that all right and we'll move this over here so yes i was mentioning that i actually got a new phone over the holidays i've been using it and i've used it for about not even has it been a month just under a month at this point and honestly other than getting used to it, it's not as bad as I initially thought. However, uh, I'm kind of disappointed in the cameras, honestly. Uh, I understand it is the... Which is called Samsung Galaxy S23 FE. So the 23 FE is basically last year's model, but with the chassis of this year's uh, mobile phone. So it does look like a regular 23 FE, a uh, regular Samsung uh, S23, but it actually does have most of the specs of last year's phone. However, last year's phone says, oh, it's much better, it's great, it's fine. And I was disappointed even just at the cameras of this thing because every time I try to take a photo, the photo looks relatively nice and it's not that bad. However, I found that it looked very grainy. It didn't look soft. It looked sharp, but grainy, which is different. My my old phone, which is what you're looking at currently, this is my old phone. It looks... Okay, it looks great. The colors are fine, but it doesn't look grainy at all. It looks a little soft overall. However, it's not grainy. The difference with Samsung's, it looks sharper, but it looks grainy. You know, like, like I can see the megapixels. It, it's not a good look. I don't like it. I'd rather it be a little softer. That way it looks a little more true to life versus what I have right now, which is grainy. And I don't like it. it I don't like the grain. And not only that, the software that I use to record, I can't actually use it over here. I can't use it in the live stream just because the way it works oh right samsung's i can show you so this is the second angle as you can see you can see all of the stuff here but yeah um let me move this aside a little okay so over here you can see it looks sharp this is a higher resolution image but it doesn't look quite as nice as for example if i move over back down to the top down camera this looks sharper it looks slightly soft but the detail isn't lost. You know what I mean? That's the difference. I I feel that going from one to another, this that that this camera here, 
this camera actually is more of a this is my tablet i've had this tablet for years on end but it looks relatively similar to what the s23 fe is outputting i should double check reviews and actually see if that's the case with the cameras because sometimes i remember because i watch a lot of tech review camera reviews and stuff like that i i never saw it I, ne I never remembered. I knew it looked like weird, soft and stuff. And some people don't really do pixel peeping because they're looking at it at a phone. They aren't on their computers as much. Most of the people who actually look at social media look at, uh, look at it through the lens of looking at a phone. They don't actually look at it uh, in terms of, oh, let me put it on the big screen. But lately, there's a small... Sorry, there's a small trend of some people realizing that cable TV costs too much. And given all the advertising that they're putting through even cable TV on, oh, hey, by the way, watch all these shows at any time that you want with the subscription platform that we have instead of TV. And TV's wondering why they're dying out. <clears throat> Sorry, I need some water here. Jeez. Yeah, no, I'm, it's going, dude, it's nuts. My, my throat dries out so fast nowadays. I really shouldn't be streaming. So that's why I really shouldn't be streaming, but I'm streaming anyways. I can't really do a silent stream unless you want an ASMR stream, which is just like, oh, me doing this. Uh, you can hear like things happening in the background, but nothing's actually happening. You might actually be able to hear me breathe go, <laughs> Or coughing once in a while but other than that you won't hear a thing all right so now that we have it here we're not gonna try the tape mod on this yet we might be able to go back to it and tape mod it i think because it already sounds solid without the tape mod all it's gonna do is make it sound slightly less reverby so it'll have a more solid sound and less of a pop and i like the pop that happens with the glorious pandas on this and like I said, this is a different key switch entirely. Okay. Chat, a little bit of help here. Where's my key switch puller? Do you guys remember where I put it? Oh no. <laughs> I literally showed it. I literally, I, I was, I was, wait, 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 wait. Dude, I was using it just 10 seconds ago. I was showing it off 10 seconds ago. Oh, there it is. Jesus. So for context, for context, you, you see this over here. You see that. This section here, it was right behind it. It was right behind it. Oh my God. Jesus. Here it is. All right. But you know, I don't like I don't like the cameras on the S23 FE. Oh, I can put this over here. So, I do not like the cameras on the S23 FE. It's not bad. And a couple times I've actually gone out and while I was out, I really wanted to take a photo of certain things. And oh my god. If I wanted to zoom, the times 3 was absolutely horrible. Then again, my old phone was not too different. However, it was a little more zoomed in on its main lens, which is a good thing for me because if it's zoomed in on the main lens and it works relatively fine, then yeah, it's it should be fine where I would be able to zoom in and it won't be as digitally cropped. However, the Samsung 23 FE was so cropped that the grain was very obvious. It was so grainy. It was really textured in like the bad artifacty kind of way where I don't I don't like it. I did not like it one bit. But of course you it is what it is. I didn't really buy I kind of bought bought it because this this phone, the one that you guys are looking at, as you can see, it looks fine. You can read that quite easily. It's very sharp, it looks nice, it's not horrible. Yeah, it's 
it has a good quality to it. But going to, again, the Samsung, this is literally the same thing that I was seeing. This is no different the, to the S23 FE. If I move here, if I put in, where was that? I, I showed you the Glorious, right? You can read that, but it's not as sharp. It looks grainy. I don't like it. And then go back here. It's, it's not even as close. I don't know. I think it's partly the app. And I was testing this as well with the actual, uh, the actual cameras. With a built-in camera on the S23 FE, the camera thing. Oh, that's why you were wanting to tr try having an iPhone instead, right? Uh, Cray? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Cray. Uh, but, yeah, I wanted to... I wanted to try iPhone. The problem was, right now, I don't have the budget for it. I really do not have the budget for it, unfortunately. It's one of those things where I wanted to try iPhone because there are a couple apps that is iPhone-specific that turns it into a webcam. And this is what I'm doing. I'm doing the same thing with my phone and my tablet where I'm turning it into a webcam, but the webcam software only sees the ultra-wide version of the cam lens. It's not actually using any of the other lenses. The main lens was not being shown. And because the main lens wasn't being shown, it's one of those, ah, uh, really? I can't even use the good camera out of it? So I wanted, I, I wanna know if there is any other camera software that is available. But unfortunately, it seems like this is really the best one. The only other thing I've seen is called Video Ninja. I haven't tried yet. That is free. I'm gonna try at one point. And it's and that's mostly because I'm I'm curious, morbidly curious. But last time I tried Video Ninja, the stream. <clears throat> sorry. We're going to go with uh, I don't know, uh Cray, by the way. You want silence or linears? You want clickies or linears, actually? Clicky or linear? Let me know. Come on. Or chat. Everyone in chat. Clicky? Linear? Linear? Clicky? Ooh. Ooh. This is uh, this is one of the more silent ones, uh, actually, honestly. Weirdly enough. Give it a couple seconds there. But yeah, while I'm complaining about uh, my old phone, uh, or my new phone. One of the other things I don't like about my new, what well, I do like actually, sorry. Let's, let's, let's go with a positive spin on the thing that I have right now, is that the Samsung tablets or One UI, I think they call it, actually has a battery saver thing. For example, I don't really go out that often during the weekdays or weekends. If I am not going out, what I do is I enable the power saver or the battery saver section where it limits your phone to 85% percent sorry i'm still a little sick um but effectively i am limiting my sorry not camera what was i saying i'm limiting my phone battery to be charged maximum to 85 percent where they believe that's where the sweet spot is of having them the highest amount of charge while maintaining a good battery life so if i'm not going out and i know i'm not going out for the day i don't mind just leaving it at 85 percent instead of 100 And one of the other things that I do is I actually went in because it has 120 hertz refresh rate screen. I tried it for a couple days to see if I would hate going back to a regular refresh rate screen. And I noticed the difference. I don't care. I don't care enough to be like, oh, I, I really like that the screen goes up to 120 hertz. And so many people, oh, it just feels nicer. I'm like, yes, it feels nicer. But I don't care enough to waste more battery just to have a higher refresh rate screen. It's not, I don't know. I don't find it useful enough to warrant draining more battery life. Yes, it is relatively dynamic. Yes, it doesn't do it all the time. And yes, it doesn't, it makes sure to keep going. Uh, what keep going? It makes sure not to do that uh, in apps that don't really need it or when until you move the screen. So I'm sitting here going, yes, if you're looking at a static in image, yeah, you will definitely notice the difference. There, there will be 100% a difference. Hang on. Why is, oh, my plate is technically 
I forget that the plate is technically removable. If this was still hot swap, I can just lift this out this plate. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yes, but the, that's one of the downsides that I don't like about it. It part of it makes me feel like I'm missing out. The other part of it, I kind of feel like, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter enough at all. Um Okay, I'm realizing a problem with what I did just now. I might have screwed myself over. Because now what I need to do is hold this uh, plate up while I put in the switches. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm, I can just do that, honestly. It's not the worst problem in the world. But it's one of those, oh, by the way, I need this switch to clip into the um, onto the keyboard. And unfortunately, I do not have... As much leverage as I wish I did. There we go. So I'm just gonna lift this up a little bit and put it on the other side. That way I have a platform to uh, keep it on. Then since this is a hot swap, I can just put all the switches in and then worry about aligning it a little later. So that should be the case. Let's hold it up. Uh, nope, give me that. There we go. A little stopper to allow myself some leeway in pushing things in. And yeah, where was I on the phone thing? Uh, the phone's honestly, it works fine. Um, is it slower than, or is it way better than my old phone? Oh, it's not way better. If my old phone wasn't cracked, I would still be on my old phone. I, I kid you not. This, that thing is a beast. The other downside of why I actually left to stay on or move to the, the phone is not just the cracked screen. It's that... Oh my god. <coughs> Sorry. It's straight up that I my LG V60, this is the camera you guys are looking at right now. The LG V60 has a, has a second screen. Unfortunately, that broke too. So I'm sitting here with a phone that has extra qualities that I can't use. So there's no point in me just, you know, uh, how do I say it? Leaving, am I even getting in there? Come on. Um, there's no point in me using a phone that's cracked, has lag. There's a general amount of lag just because the OS itself is a little, it, yeah, the OS. Yeah, the OS or the architecture itself is about three and a half years old at this point. So it is a little slower than you would expect it to be. But it's not the worst thing that I've had. Even the fingerprint scanner is actually doing a better job. It's much more accurate. I didn't have any issues with it. Even when I was setting up the S23 FE previously, when I first opened it up, and this is on a clean screen, I haven't touched it previously. There's no oil on it, no nothing. I was having issues getting my fingerprint to scan. And I'm sitting here going, geez, okay. And the face biometrics takes way too long. Tell you right now, face biometrics, that's kind of nice and fine and dandy. But it's, I don't know, it doesn't feel useful to me. It really doesn't. I would sit here where I would use both just to see which is faster. I would take out my phone, right? Put up my phone. Now that my phone is there, it unlocks and then I have to, and then I swipe. I've tried the one where you don't have to swipe. And, oh yeah, get, by the way, Gengar. Love Gengar, one of my favorite Pokemon. It's just a new phone. I use a D brand skin on it and I really, really like it. But no, I don't love this phone as much as I loved my phone when I first bought the LG V60. There's a different thing. But yeah, so I was doing that. And what happened was I felt that it was not very secure to have my face and just unlock immediately. Because if I was at a, you know, uh, at a party or doing something any in general and I wasn't paying attention, someone could just look, show me my phone and be like, oh, and then it's unlocked. I don't have to even look at it too directly for it to unlock sometimes. So I, I felt I felt like that was more of a security risk than a pro to have a, your lock screen tied to your face. 
I haven't even tried to see if it works with a picture yet. And that's gonna be the harder part. If it works with a picture, uh, I don't know. I have it on, but after the month is over, I might turn it off because I think it's more of a detriment than it is a pro at this point. I would definitely rather have, what's it called? I would definitely rather have a more secure phone versus something that seems to be convenient and doesn't really help. And the fingerprint scanner I was complaining about. The fingerprint scanner, not as responsive as my old phone. It is slightly slower. Do I notice? Yes, but only when it's side by side. Otherwise, it feels kind of the same. And it's only about a year and a half or two years older or a two year newer architecture compared to my old phone. But whatever LG is doing, they had a better, what's it called? Response time for the fingerprint scanner. And I'm sitting here going, man, why did LG leave the game? Because everyone was buying Samsung and Apple and everything else instead of LG. And when I first bought the LG phone, the LG phone, I bought it outright. Uh, outright. Completely outright. I just, it was Canadian. The Samsung phones were going for the same exact specs and memory bandwidth, or sorry, memory, storage capacity as the LG V60. The Samsung S20? Yeah, S20 was literally $250 extra on top of the LG V60. The LG V60 had the exact same specs as the Samsung phone while also having a second screen. Two screens! So there was extra feature. The problem was when anyone was reviewing it, they were like, oh, the extra screen's a gimmick. The extra screen came extra for free while, oh, well, for free. I say for free, you're paying for it because apparently in the US, it was $100 extra to, to keep that added in. But the price of the LG V60 over there, because I'm in Canada, was actually $100 cheaper. So in other words, I was just getting it for the price because in Canada, you can't buy just the phone itself at the time. Um, and... Yeah, no, it came with a second screen where you can opt out and get it for $100 cheaper. So now, it was $350 cheaper than the Samsung S20 at the time. And it had extras. It had the same, sorry, it had one thing over the LG V60. Oh, the LG V60 had one thing over the S20. Was its 4,500 milliamp hour battery life. Meanwhile, the S20 had a 3,900. While the LG had a 4500. Like, I would have taken the battery life. Not only that, uh, the edges felt a little nice and smooth. The grip on this thing, on the LG V60, was great. Honestly, I liked how it gripped and was on my phone. I ran the phone uh, completely, um, how do you say it? Raw? No, no, uh, no, what's it called? No skin and no case on it for about two years on and off with the case because whenever I went out I put the case on that way I can use the second screen when I was indoors the second screen didn't really matter that much because all I did was kind of prop it up or I used it as a prop up more than anything but for that last year before it actually cracked I was actually able to use it for um, as a stand even right now that's what I use it for I kind of just use it as a stand I don't actually use it as a second screen because it actually had uh, the second screen broke. I don't know how it broke. Uh, at one point, it just stopped and refused to work. I kind of wish I could buy one of those. However, a second screen costs about $300 Canadian. I'm going, mm. at that point, I'm buying a new phone. Because $300 Canadian, I would rather put that somewhere else. And right now, I'm kind of in the middle of thinking of buying a couple of switches. Uh, I'm looking at Iron. KBD on on uh, RNK was it RNKBD yeah RNKBD I was looking at RNKBD for the for some new switches just because they come with they also sell springs they sell alt springs and they have springs that go up to 210 grams a 210 gram spring and I'm sitting here going 210 grams I kind of want to try that out that sounds fun 
That sounds like I'd have some fun trying that out. Because I had some fun trying out the 78 gram or 76 gram from Zeal, which is this switch, by the way. 70 plus grams. And the 70 plus grams, not as bad as you think. And I think it is a secondary way for people to silence their keyboards. Because if you think about it, if you're trying to silence a keyboard, the reason you create a sound when bottoming out is because you bottom out harshly. And when you bottom out harshly, that changes, it takes that energy you use to bottom down, uh, bottom out into sound. If it's, what's it called? If you have, if it takes a higher amount of force to bottom out, there's less of that energy being used to turn into sound. So it kind of makes sense because you can't like push it out completely. The second reason is you can actually use it on speed switches, which is I think a, a good a good way to use speed switches. Heavy speed switches. I think that would be a, a really good idea. Speed switches, except they were heavy, where you can just swipe on the top. It's 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 like floating. You, you never bottom out. It's a switch that you never bottom out on. You're actually just swiping the top because it's a speed switch. You can just Swipe, 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 swipe. Just swipe the top. Just crest over it. And you don't have to ever bottom out. That would be a good good idea for a switch. And honestly, I might do I might do it. I might just buy <laughs> I just might buy the springs to give it a shot and see if that makes sense. And if I was ever to be able to make my own manufactured switches, that's probably one of the few switches I would go for. Because I think there might be a market for it. It's the problem is the actual marketing of it. Because think about it, a lot of the gaming keyboards, a lot of the brands, they don't really go above uh, 70. They try to go 62.5, 67, 63.5. They don't want, they don't want to go to that 70 mark. They don't want to go past that 70 mark. And going all the way to 200 plus, that is a little, that is a little much. It feels like a little much, to be honest. But, you know, it's one of those things you kind of just have to find out at that point. You don't really know. Um, and see if the market will allow for it. I, I personally, I would personally buy it due to absolute morbid curiosity. No other reason. I would have done it. Just, just to run it. And then I would have run it for about a month or so just to make sure I know what I was using. Just to see that I don't have any recency bias. Because for example, these switches are, I think the bottom out is 50 gram, a 50 gram bottom out for the Glorious Link switches. If I'm not mistaken, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I might be remembering the other ones, the one, other red switches, Fox. I think they called it Fox switches. Because the links are the blue one, the red one were the Fox switches. And honestly, their newer linear switches, the Fox, the Reds, their sorry, their reds are actually slightly better. <laughs> I like it better. Unfortunately, I only have a numpad full of them because that's the only way you were able to get them previously. But they aren't too much different from cherry reds that are properly lubed. But these are unlubed. <laughs> that's the thing. These are Okay, caveat, I don't actually know. I don't know if these are looped and or unlooped, so I don't know, my bad. But yeah, it, it's just one of those things where I'm going, mm, would, would anyone try 210 gram switches just to try 210 gram switches? I don't know. Personally, I, I would love it just for the heck of it, just to be able to do it, you know? Like, ever tried that? at all yeah but let's oh this is slightly poppier it still sounds a little solid but it's nicer it's a little nicer than uh, the glorious pandas we had just a little bit ago yeah so we'll check that we'll do a couple quotes and then we'll move into what's it called move into time Actually, we'll move into time first, and then we'll see uh, quotes. Because that way we have a baseline of 
just relatively fast typing and some yeah there we go and some variation of keys as well instead of a specific subset of keys just because of it depending on the quote that you get so yeah plus the english language they don't go through all of the uh, letters of the alphabet when you actually go through uh go through typing or writing anything man it is relatively hard okay yeah, so one of the reasons why I do this weird thing where I lay everything out well, is actually just because it allows me to do things much faster. If I laid them, if I just quickly remove them, because you can quickly remove keycaps. However, if you quickly remove them, they end up in a mess all over the board or all over this section. But now I can just grab things and not quite look because I know they're already arranged. So it's faster in the long run, I believe. I might be incorrect, but I believe in the long run, it is much faster. All right, looks like we are done. Okay, let us stop the music. There we go. Yeah, this is clackier. There's a clackier sound to it, but it still sounds solid. I really don't know. Yeah, it depends on where the board on the board it is. I don't know. I feel like this isn't too bad in comparison to it. It might just be, yeah, because this key switch is the bronze. It doesn't sound great. Even the key next to it. All right, so yeah, no, it just is the switches. A lot of the issues I found with gaming keyboards happen to be the switches, but you know, let's uh, see here. Uh, we'll go with time, 30 seconds. All right, time, 30 seconds on the clock. Again, now this is the Ducky 1-2 Mini with Milmax switches on them, or Milmaxed on the PCB with Glorious link switches and SA keycaps. No real modifications done to the board. I feel like we did some modifications. I don't believe there's any modifications in this other than the Milmax, but remind me if I'm wrong, but there should be no other modifications other than the Milmaxing of the board. All right, let me grab this. That way I can actually connect to, to the board and start typing right after I drink some water. Mm. But yeah, no, it's uh, one of those things where I'm like, if, if you guys didn't know, a lot of the gaming keyboards do not lube their switches. That's why they sound kind of bad. They're using regular Cherry MX switches and not lubing them. So that's why they're bad. But anyways, Let's try again, Ducky 1-2 Mini with Milmaxed PCB, Glorious Link Switches, and SA Keycaps. Jesus, that space bar. <laughs> that space bar. That sounded. The return of that space bar. <laughs> that actually. In the middle, in the sea of all that typing, the those that that poppy return. It sounds not horrible. I don't I don't personally hate it. Oh my god. I I like that. I like how it sounds. It brings a little bit of joy in my <laughs> to me. But it's like it's it's annoying if I ever have to keep typing and typing and typing and I was trying to pay attention while I was typing. I would just go like boop boop boop. 
<laughs> it would be funny. It would just really be funny. Okay, let's do some of the mods first real quick. Yeah, that's... No, I, I kind of like how it sounds. It, this is way too solid. I don't know if it's something to do with the PCB and where it's landing. Because the feet is... That's where the feet is, relatively speaking. I think it's solid just because that's where the adjustable feet is. So it doesn't quite sound as... Yeah, that's a little too solid. Yeah, it doesn't sound quite as good as this. Yeah. But yeah, no, the, the lube doesn't seem to want to stay where... Where it's supposed to be. But I do like that return sound. Like nice and poppy bubbles. Okay, okay. Oh, and then this is the bronze just as a reference. There you go. Alright. Now. <clears throat> on to the actual quote this time we'll do some quotes but yeah no unfortunately my my throat is drying out really really fast i have to do a lot i drink a lot of water just because winter man winter is so dry i really really don't like it but you know it is what it is <laughs> unfortunately but all right next test but this time we are going to go with quote medium Again, this is the Ducky 1 2 Mini that has been mill maxed and has no other modifications than putting SA keycaps and the Glorious Lynx switches. They are lubed with Cryotox 205 Grade Zero. All right. All right, let us go with this quote. The Sandman. Okay. Oh, I hit Y twice and I didn't notice. All right. Okay. So that was horrible on my part, but I did go over 55 words per minute. And looks like I had a peak burst of about 108 words per minute and the worst, which is that last bit there of 12. Hmm. But now to talk about the quote. And... There we go. So, talking about the quote. It is sometimes a mistake to climb. It is always a mistake to never even make the attempt. But it is. But is it really so bad to fail? If you do not climb, you will not fall. This is true. But is it that hard to fail? That hard to fall? Sometimes you wake, and sometimes, yes, you die. All right. I, I think we talked about this last stream anyways. Um, it is sometimes a mistake to climb. Yes, and people... You know, I've, I've noticed, even in my own life, right? Where I always think it's a mistake to even try without knowing what you're doing. And that's why it becomes a mistake. Because you try with absolute hope in your eyes and you go, Oh my god! Yeah, I can totally do this! I... I uh, my... My analogy is, if you've ever seen some of those drivers who go down the road and they see a pothole and they go, I think my car can take it, and they just go right over the pot pothole and it's a 50-50% chance if their actual tire just bursts, you, you don't know. It, it might just go boop and now your, your tire has a hole in it because you went over the pothole hoping it'll be fine. Meanwhile. You can look at it in a way that, oh my god, there's a pothole there. Let me just avoid that real quick. 
So yes, you don't... Sometimes it's a mistake to climb. You don't have to do it the way you hope it'll work out. You can actually do it in a different way. You can actually keep going and going and going. It is always a mistake never even to make an attempt. That is true. The solution might be different and your attempt might look different from someone else who doesn't know what they're doing, but you can always make the attempt. Even if your skill level is relatively low, to make the attempt is better than not to make the attempt. However, make sure when you make an attempt, you make an honest attempt, you look at it, take stock of what you're supposed to be doing and what you can do given the situation. Like when you're trying to make this climb, you're actually looking at it, looking at that wall. And you think to yourself, where, where am I going to place my feet? Where am I going to place my hands? As I climb up this wall, how high can I get without, what's it called? Without stalling, just, just like how I did just there. If you do not climb, but is it really so bad to fail? Yeah, and that's the thing. I've seen way too many times, and I've done it in my own life, where you, I'm so, I was so scared to even try that I don't even bother. And at one point later in my life, I tried anyways, and it wasn't as bad as I thought. It sucks sometimes at the start because, of course, you're starting it out, and you fail. But that's how you learn. You end up going, oh, that wasn't as easy as I thought. Let me try it this other way. Or you go think to yourself, oh, there's a better way to do it than this very specific hard way that I was doing it previously. Why not make it easy for myself? But you don't think that until you do it, right? All right, if you do not climb, you will not fall. This is true. And yeah, no, I've I've seen <clears throat> I've seen this actually as well. If you do not climb, you will not fall, which is true. I've seen this with my parents, unfortunately, where my parents wouldn't even try anything. And one of the quotes that I have from my parents, and it's absolutely horrendous. I've gone through college, I am done learning. You might you might be done with college. That means you don't learn anything. You, you still have to learn to live through life as things evolve. Technologies are released. Uh, studies and multiple things happen all across the world that allows you to do more things with less resources. Previously, like I said, I was kind of complaining about how my camera or my newer camera or phone, people call their phones cameras at this point. It's practically interchangeable these days. But my newer phone doesn't feel as good as when I had my older phone. My older phone, when I first got it, I was excited. I was very excited. I loved it. It was great. I was changing settings. I was moving through, trying different things. Nothing I would do would actually crash it or break it. And even if I did change a setting that I quite didn't understand what it do uh, does, and it kind of like made things a way I didn't like it, I can just reset it. I can just put it back the way it was. It wasn't irreversible and that's fine learning that you don't like specific things means you are moving forward and trying things that you know that you will like if you never actually try things and find out if you like it like for example i, I remember it's the most ridiculous thing that i've ever seen my parents year after year after year after year even this year literally it was uh I say this year like it's a uh, it's been it's been so long uh, but basically my latest uh, one of my parents' birthday they go oh let's go somewhere we haven't gone in a while do you know where we've gone we've gone to two places ever since we've gotten here in Canada for the most part we went to either Captain's Boil or Asian Fusion Mist for the last, oh, I don't know, six years since they found it on a birthday. My sister's birthday was missed. My father's birthday, he went to Rome. Cool. Um, 
My mother's birthday, we went to Captain's Boil. My sister's birthday, we went to Captain's Boil. My brother's birthday, we went to Miss. My birthday, we went to, guess what? Captain's Boil. Oh my God. And then one of my parents had a birthday. Guess where we went? We went to Captain's Boil. And before that, let's try somewhere new. What? How's that new? How's that new? And when I suggest something, for example, there's this restaurant I've actually recently gone to. Um, and it's great. I like it. And I'm going to share it anyways, just in case none of you are from BC. But there is a restaurant called I Am Zaman. It's, uh, it's a Syrian restaurant, which has really good food authentic shawarma like actually good shawarmas it actually tastes like shawarmas and i grew up in the middle east i'm not saying oh i'm from canada this is the best shawarma i have had no i'm saying coming from the middle east as a kid that grew up in the middle east this is a show <clears throat> this is a shawarma that tastes like it came from the middle east it didn't taste like white people shawarma not to be racist i'm just saying it didn't taste like it was catering to a caucasian north american audience that's what i'm saying not only that everything on the menu was very similar to everything that i've tasted they have this what they call a cheese a cheese manakish a right, cheese manakish is basically imagine arabic bread like a naan which is indian but it's it's kind of like a non it's between a non and a pita bread this is basically what it is it's between a non and a pita bread in taste and texture and on top of that is cheese not mozzarella cheese i don't remember the specific cheese that they use but it's just cheese and that's it there's no sauce no nothing and this tastes better than some pizzas i've had fresh slice Tastes better than Fresh Slice. Uh, Pizza Hut tastes better than Pizza Hut. Domino's tasted better than Domino's. That you can give me almost any, almost any pizza place, this thing would taste better. And it only cost me 10 Canadian. But meanwhile, when I was in the Middle East, even about... When was the last time I was in the Middle East? Seven years ago? Eight? I don't remember. Let's just say 10. 10 years ago, when I was back in the Middle East, Actually, that would have cost me about four bucks. But no, over here, it's unfortunately 10. But honestly, absolutely worth it. I would pay for it again. But, and I have multiple times. It's a really good restaurant. Um, the problem is it's like 40 minutes away from me. So I, I'm not, I'm not going there too often. I'm just like, 40 minutes. <laughs> Do I want to spend 40 minutes for a cheese manakish? I might. Honestly, I might. But it's it's one of those, do I go out of my way to go for this very specific food? Uh, kinda, probably. You know what? Sure. Okay. But yes. Um, and that, that's, that's the funny part. Uh, where was I? Yeah, but is it that hard to fail? Sometimes you wake and sometimes, yes, you die. And trying things out. That's how I find these cool places. I try things out. I go outside my general comfort zone. I don't go so far that when I fail, it's so detrimental. Like right now, I'm doing a bunch of things that if I fail, it could be detrimental. But at least it's not the worst thing ever. It It's not a failure that completely destroys me. Is what I'm saying. Sometimes you wake, sometimes you die. I have the high likelihood of waking if I fall from this climb that I'm doing currently, which is like the content creation grind that you, you kind of do. So honestly, it's not the worst thing in the world. I would say go for it. If you're trying to do something and you think you might like it, even if you won't like it, Oh, maybe I won't like it. it. Might not be that good. Maybe it will probably take too long. Uh, what if it's not that great? Then try it. You don't. You don't know the answers to any of this, and 
to actually get the answers you're looking for, you're gonna have to climb over that mountain, reach the mountaintop, and realize the view sucks. Maybe, next time, you can climb a different mountain. But you now know that this mountain, you don't like the view. You don't like the climb either. So, how about go somewhere else? Go to a different mountain. Try that. But unfortunately, a lot of the people that I know in my life, um, family, unfortunately, it, they, they're they kind of stuck. They're, not that I'm not. Um, I, I, have, <clears throat> I have the same blood in my veins. So I end up being stuck in my ways as well. So it is one of those things where I'm trying to be more cognizant of knowing where I'm getting stuck and moving past that. However, I'm having a hard time even recognizing that I'm stuck. And I think the same is with some of my family. They don't realize they're stuck because they're comfortable in that stuck position. Even me, I'm comfortable in this stuck position. I'm, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. But my rock and a hard place are, are ain't exactly uncomfortable, if you know what I mean. All right, let's go with quote number two. And hopefully we don't, we wake and not die. All right, next test. <laughs> Have you ever fixed it up? <laughs> All right. Again, this is uh, just a reminder for people watching. This is the Ducky 1-2 Mini, which has been modded into a hot swap keyboard with Milmax sockets. It has the glorious link switches, which are linear switches, and SA keycaps. I like the I personally like the space bar, but some people might not like it. Okay, uh, not great. I don't like it. It's 47 words per minute with a peak at the end there of about 106 and a low of 44. No, 27. My bad. Apparently, that's from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Um, hmm. I don't really remember uh, Half-Blood Prince. Um, but okay. All right, so... Have you ever fixed a nose before? No, but I've done several toes and how different are they really? Well, they're really different. Uh, a nose is mostly cartilage. So if you're looking at a nose, you have a skin that flaps over, kind of like your toes. Like here, you would see if you were, there were toes, that you would have these sections in the middle where you could actually spread them. The, the closest you can get is the, the nose holes and those little bits. But those are skin. There is no bone in there. Um, and even then, that is cartilage. Is this cartilage? But I know in between, there is cartilage uh, on your nose. And that's what keeps its shape. That what's, that's what gives shape to this section of the nose, the nose bridge, which is over here. And for some people, I don't know. Um, when I was in high school, at one point, one of my teachers got a nose job. And honestly, she looked uglier for it. I, I, I don't mean to demean her. I just went, Ugh, she doesn't look as nice as she did before. But it could literally be that when she had her nose quote unquote fixed, um, she, uh, yeah, when she got her nose quote unquote fixed, she looked completely different than what I would associate with the my mental image of this person. So my brain just went, oh, that's the same, but different, but not great. It's kind of like looking at a twin, but the twin has a different haircut, and you go, that's a wrong version of my friend. Yeah, it's uh, that's, the, that's the gist that I kind of feel from it. But yeah. Oh, yo, out of context, this kind of is funny. Have you ever fixed a nose before? No, I've done several toes, and how different are they really? Imagine getting a um a, ma a pedicure pedicure manicure pedicure imagine getting a pedicure or a being a pedicurist but like being asked to fix the nose 
<laughs> oh yes, I am a pedicurist. I can definitely be a nose surgeon. Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> No, you cannot. You cannot be a cosmetic surgeon. That's the word I'm looking for. You cannot be a cosmetic surgeon just because you are a pedicurist. It's not the same thing. Don't do it. You will hurt yourself and other people in the process. Okay. You're like, Jesus. Don't do it. Just don't do it. It's not, it's not worth it. Okay. Let's actually go into clickies as well. So we're going to try clickies on this. That way we can have a decent comparison and we'll probably do the tape mod real quick and then move all the way back on to the glorious pandas let me grab my clickies because I, I was gonna do the browns but these are lubed cherry mx browns though these are actually not bad um lube cherry mx browns i don't want to really do because they're not quite as I don't know. They're fine. They're, they're not horrible. I've noticed actually with gaming switches, the gaming switch, these came from a gaming keyboard, similar to the Ducky One Too Mini. The difference is with gaming switches, they aren't lubed, and a lot of the gaming keyboards come in hollow. So any of the issues that you would have with the switch, and this is your base bog standard switch, will reverb right through the case. There's no foam padding, there's no tape mod, no nothing. So, if you want to fix the sound of a board, even just tape modding it might actually help, even if it's a, just a gaming keyboard. And if you're able to, before you tape mod it, actually remove the switches out of the gaming keyboard, loop them, put them back in, and then tape mod them, and obviously, now you'll get a much better experience. If you're able to put some, some stuff like polyfill or a foam insert in the bottom, uh, hopefully a high porosity fo foam insert in the bottom. You've got it. It's great. <coughs> All right, let me get my clicky switches. Mm. I have blues and I have bronzes. What do you guys think? Blues or bronze? I'm thinking bronze myself. Just that way I don't want to use this keyboard. So it's one or the other guys we'll put the browns back because i don't really want to mess with that too much let's look at the parts oh there we go god damn that keyboard looked like i was about to fall yeah that's the other one that's actually the other one i want to mill max the uh one of the other ducky keyboards. I use this as the sacrificial uh, sacrificial pawn to gain EXP. <clears throat> but yes, I now have, let me take this off. All right. I now have, guess what? Two clicky switches available to me. There's this. This is the blue. Oh. Fill. and this is the bronze oh it's our copier oh this feels heavier i like it yeah in comparison even just with between the blue and uh the the bronze it's kind of weird where like the blues are silent in comparison to these. Jeez, these are loud. Yeah, looking at the waveform, putting it next to the mic, it's as, uh, it's as loud as my voice. Meanwhile, the blues, yeah, it's about half. Going here. Almost as loud as my voice. Jesus. Okay. All right. So, yeah, let's actually uh, give this a shot here. And we're going to go with apparently. Let's go with the louder one. Let's see if we can overwhelm the board. 
Let's see if it fixes the issue we're having with it. It's being a little hollow. Okay. Let's go with this. We're gonna go with this next. Um, this, we can put this back. Alright. So we're gonna go with this next. Stuff. There we go. Move this aside. Alright. Taking off the keycaps once more. Honestly, I am doing a lot of keycaps insertion and removal at this point that it's getting a little crazy i'm kind of worried about some of my keycaps getting loose over time or even the key switches getting loose over time because of the amount of times i actually uh, do them so it's it's much harder i don't know i don't think it's that hard Ooh, one of the things i might try is just building out one of my um numpads i have a numpad that oh that's not let's bump down the music a little bit i have a numpad that i do use that i have that i haven't quite built out yet and i don't know i think they are hot swap so it should be fine but if they're not hot swap that's something i can mill max as well oh some of these are tight you know i'm taking off the switches anyway so i don't see why you bother trying to keep them on there i, I even put one back like oh my god jesus I even put one back. That's that's kind of horrible. Jeez, what have I been doing, honestly? But, alright. What was I saying? So. I was talking earlier about uh, phone. I was doing phone stuff earlier. So, when I was talking about my phone, uh, Galaxy S23 FE, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be moving from one phone to the other. Uh, most of my settings are completely different because normally I would go from stock all stock and then I would download all the things that I would need I would base it off of what I have on my phone and or my old phone that I definitely need but I would stop bringing all the other stuff over for example I used to have a bubble leveler on my phone but at this point I don't really use the bubble leveler because it's not exactly the most reliable thing versus your eyes but at the very least it's something to correct your bias if you have a bias to one side or the other and if you're arguing with someone going no 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 this is level here just do this it's level like i don't i don't see why you're like saying it's not level when it's obviously level anyways so oh you it's it's basically there to end arguments so because i had arguments previously with some of my parents just going no it's not level enough go get the bubble level you're telling me to go buy a bubble level from the store when I can literally download one right now. Do you understand how far the store is? Jesus. It's ridiculous. But yes, it's one of those things where I moving from one phone to the other is not too bad. I don't hate it. The... It was much faster too because i have like apps for security too so basically uh two-factor authentication apps and not only that plus obviously the phone number on top so moving from one to the other was less of a pain than i thought and honestly i feel like it should be a lot more of a pain just because it's a security app i feel it should be a little less convenient to just transfer it over honestly it's one of those things where i think this is a bug not a feature i get it it's more convenient but if anyone gets a hold of your phone it makes it so much easier to transfer things over it's it's ridiculous it's a security app for crying out loud why would you add convenience features for transferring your security app from one phone to another that sounds ridiculous at this point why would you do that don't do that what are you do I get it. I really get it. It's already inconvenient that you have to use a security app every time you have to log in. But just to ensure that you're safe, you buy you get this security app and then you realize to transfer what your security app from one phone to another phone, it's as easy as scanning a QR code. Why? What the heck? That's not supposed to be the case. Don't do that. That is horrible. You should honestly never ever 
rely on that if that's the case. And if you are, of course, going through, I, me, I, I don't like it. I really hate every time I log in, I'm like, oh, here's your security passcode. And then you go get your security passcode, you copy it to clipboard and you paste it. I'm sitting here going, yeah, yeah, I hate having to do that. Some of the cool security features are kind of useless when it pops it up on your screen and says the security code. If someone has a screen logger or a key logger on your phone but is unable to access the clipboard, they see your pass your your security code anyways. So I I like it that it pops up copy the security code number one, two, three, four, five. But at the same time, can you not show the security code? Can you just say can, would you like to copy the security code from text and leave it at that instead of showing it? Especially if some ha some hackers don't actually have the ability to go through the, what's it called? Uh, the rest of the code or doesn't see anything other than other keystrokes on your keyboard. Like, guys, like, why are we allowing this security issue? They keep going it's it feels ridiculous but you know it a lot of people do a lot of things because it's more convenient not because it's safer and convenience trumps safety which is why there are so many pri uh, uh, privacy concerns right now everyone just is okay with oh everyone is simply okay with having what's it called it, they're okay with not having privacy in exchange for goods and services. And that's what we're finding right now. We're finding that everyone's okay with it. And that's the problem. They shouldn't be okay with it, but we're finding that everyone's okay with it. So people or companies just keep going instead of thinking, you don't realize we don't need these data, this data, but we're taking it anyways. I'm sitting here going, are you crazy? What? But why? You literally don't need this data and i get it i i know there are for example there are people who take it too far and there are people who just use it as normal for example that huge twitch thing that happened recently of course right the huge terms of service changes that happen sweepingly and they're like oh you know what we're gonna do this we're gonna allow people to use the art tag to actually go through and actually create art without having having sensors on them and that's fine and dandy that's great and i don't hate that that is not a bad idea whatsoever but some people took it way too far and turned it kind of like into a uh, cam site that people mostly find distasteful honestly as long as it has its own category and you know age verification is a thing and no one sees that until age verification is a thing then that's fine by me personally but th not everyone's fine with it like oh yeah they're looking for my data and they're making sure that we they have the analytics and they, i think they already have the analytics to be honest i just think they just they're pretending not to at this point i don't i don't think they don't have the analytics so uh, why are we pretending at this point? Oh my god. Um, why are we not going in? Is this just too big? All right. Milmax switches. I was able to use the other one previously. This is in. Uh, it's being held across. And let's let's go across real quick. That way, most of the switch is being held. But, or most of the plate is being held by switches across the board, quite literally. I feel like that's it. It didn't? Oh my god. That is ridiculous. It really feels like I'm bending some switches here. It doesn't feel like I am... Yeah, that doesn't even feel like it's seated properly, honestly. But it probably is. It's just that I'm, I'm pulling up while pressing down on the switch. That way the switch is fully seated while actually being clipped onto the plate simultaneously. Like, that's what I expect, like the click sound. Not a sickening, crushing feeling. 
I want it to click in, not like sickeningly get crushed into it. That, that feels that feels wrong, but that's what's happening right now. There's, the board is creaking too, so eventually this should be holding most of the most of the plate, if not all of the plate, and we should then be able to test the rest of the switches on top and at the bottom. But no, it's uh, one of those things where I'm sitting here going, oh, come on, come on, push down. But yeah, no. All right. So where was I talking about? I was talking about something. Um, security on my new phone. So yeah, no, the phones these days, they're pretty much, if you can get a phone from the last two or three years, you're going to be fine. You do not even need the latest and greatest. If you have a new phone, that is on the budget end, you will be fine. I'm telling you that right now. I really don't think there's gonna be an actual issue with getting an older phone or from the past two to three generations or an, a newer budget phone in the last few, uh, in this current generation, honestly. And if you can get that, that's technically almost as good as a high-end phone. Almost. It's not quite the same, right? But almost as good as a high-end phone from about three years ago. So I I would say the technology right now, especially when a lot of people aren't using it, I remember a lot of, a lot of times where, oh my god, I need a, I'm a power user. I need the most power for my phone. I'm like, okay, what do you use your phone to do? And they go, I use Facebook, Instagram, and... Um, Facebook, Instagram, and whatever other social media they run. And I go, how's that a power user? I'm like, yeah, and I play games too. Okay, that's that's a power use, power hungry app. Yeah, that, that works, I guess. And they're like, yeah, like, what do you mean? Like, why are you, why are you like that? Like, what do you mean? I'm like, that doesn't sound like you're a power user. They're like, no, I'm a power user. I definitely need the power. And I sit here going, you know, I used to edit video on my phone and it worked fine on a on a phone that is a year old i i don't see why you need more power than a phone from a year or two ago because they had the phone from last year and i'm sitting here going um i don't think you need that phone i don't think you need to spend that money you can spend that money however you like but i really don't think you need to spend that money and a lot of people aren't aware that needing something and wanting something are two different things and a lot of people feel the need to have the newest thing just because it has a better what's it because it's better and I'm, I'm sitting here going better doesn't mean better it just means an improved performance as to opposed to previously you don't need improved performance when you're not even capping out the performance of your current equipment. It's like a lot of people who go, oh, I need the best mouse to be able to aim well. No, you need an aim coach is what you need. The cost of a high-end mouse, for example, G502, I can aim as well as I could with, for example, this is a 45 gram mouse. 45 grams, no, 55, sorry. 55 gram mouse. Let me turn that off real quick because I don't want to activate it. So this is a 55 gram mouse, right? Very light, 55 grams, holes in it and all. And this is 102 gram mouse. I can aim just as good as previously when I was on the other mouse, when I was on this mouse. This has more buttons. This is almost twice the weight. I really believe that your money is better spent on an aim trainer than it is on a better mouse. And honestly, it's a lot of people don't believe that. A lot of people have gear acquisition syndrome where they believe, oh, I need more gear. I need better gear. I need better production values. The, the problem with the better production values, for example, with this stream, even this stream, I have one, two, three cameras rolling out. One, two, three. I have three cameras. I have a numpad on the side. I have a mouse that costs way too much for a lot of people. I have multiple keyboards. 
You don't need any of this. I don't need any of this. However, it's always fun to have. Just have fun. It's amazing. If you're doing it for the fun, not the upgrade, you're doing it wrong. I'm doing it for the fun. I, I believe you're doing it wrong. Like, uh, uh, I don't know. I It's just one of those things where I'm sitting here going, Ugh. if you're not having fun, why are you trying so hard? But if you find it fun to keep chasing better and better tech, keep on. I, I like chasing better and better tech. It's one of the things that I find enjoyable. I like to do it. I like to know how it feels and why it feels different and why people believe it's better. And it is better. Does it change anything? When I when I was in my gas stage, my gear acquisition syndrome stage, I kept buying things left, right, and center. And I realized that I sucked regardless. I bought two mice that were high, lightweight, thinking, okay, now I can actually improve my aim with this. My aim still sucked. After doing a bunch of improvement, I I came back two years later after using lightweight mice, went back to my old heavy mouse for aiming because I only used it for work. And all of a sudden, my aim was the same as it was with the lightweight mice. I've just been practicing wrong. So I believe very firmly that if you are trying to improve in anything, buying better gear does not it makes it easier for you to actually go upon improving those skills it does not give you those skills buying better gear never gives you skills it makes it easier to obtain those skills but it doesn't make it any easier to actually apply those skills or sorry obtain those skills oh no yeah apply those skills not obtain those skills those are two different things you know i i don't know there are many reasons why people actually, what's it called, buy gear. It's because they find it fun. Or it's because it solves a specific problem that they have. And once it's solved, they don't buy any other gear. For example, I bought multiple pieces of gear to solve a specific problem and realize it doesn't really fix it. Kind of like with my... <laughs> my new phone I'm, I'm just ranting about my new phone at this point so my new phone uh was meant to fix the problem i had with my previous phone which is the lg v60 the problem i'm finding with the new phone is that it doesn't have a good enough quality lens to replace the old phone in terms of streaming because i had an issue where this stream i wanted it to be mostly white but as you can see, it feels a little dark despite being mostly white. And I would rather just move to a different, what's it called? Um, different camera? Because if you look at this, this camera, this camera is nice. It's it's fine. I move all, all over the place. It doesn't change too many things. I can do this and it shows the hand. And for some people, when I'm trying to showcase items, or they're trying to showcase items, or for example, me. When I try to showcase items sometimes, I have a problem where it does it focuses on my face. This is good, as you can see. You can see the switch just fine. Ta-da! But this one, the same thing. It looks nice until I go to the Samsung. It looks okay. I don't hate it, but it looks, eh, I don't know. It looks too grainy. And it's the same with the S23 FE. And I don't know if it matters at this point. I'm just gonna use it as, as a regular phone. I don't even care. I'm just gonna use it as a phone and keep it as a phone and change really nothing about it. Okay, looks like it's just an alignment issue. Boom. Alignment. Okay, there we go. There we go. We'll try from the left hand side. That way, there is something to carry it from the other side instead of just going through the center. Yeah, you know, that makes more sense. But yeah, no, I've uh, 
I'm both disappointed and kind of excited to keep using the phone because it is one of the few phones that I'm like, all right, it's been a while since I have a Samsung phone. My old Samsung phone is an S8. And honestly, my S8 is still chugging. One of my parents are still using it and it looks fine. Other than the screen protector that kind of seems like, eh, not that great. It keeps on working. It's it's still a workhorse. And for one of my parents, it still works fine for them. It is literally about seven years old and they just bought a new case for it. They're happy about it. They are none the wiser that newer tech exists. And honestly, a lot of people could do the same. Not you know, like for me, like I really love actually just doing this, testing the new Switch. I literally actually want to test switches on my newly mill max keyboard just because I can but this costs almost as much as buying a new board at this point I could have just bought something like a Royal Kludge 71 or 61 a Royal Kludge 61 and which already has the hot swap capability instead of uh, turning one of my keyboards for I think it was at the time about $30 and the Royal Clutch is already about 60 to 70 bucks. I just paid twice the price and I get an entirely new keyboard and it's already hot swap. But no, I decided to buy Milmax sockets, remove the old switches out of this, and put Milmax sockets, learn the hard way that previously used PCBs are very hard <laughs> to Milmax because there's already solder in them if you don't have a desoldering pump to remove as much of the solder as you can. It's ridiculous. I'm like, oh, but if it's a new board, if you have just a new board, this, you can just fit in Milmax sockets. You can see this. This was hard because, okay, and uh, just side note, the Ducky, what's it called? The Ducky 1 2 Mini or the Ducky Gaming Keyboard has the ISO layout right underneath it or the ANSI layout right underneath it. So you can see the holes for the other layout. You just don't have the other plate. You don't, they don't give you the other plate. So that's the difference. And, all oh right, the Milmax, as you can see, was hard, especially on this spot where I don't know how to hold it. It's a big hole. It, it just doesn't fit. So that was the easiest one to solder on, weirdly enough. And then when I, um, sorry. When I was actually soldering it on, I realized even the slightest bit of solder that was remaining on the board or in the hole for the switch leg would affect whether I were able to put the Milmax socket in or not. Am I in? Okay, I'm in. Okay. All right, now I can put on the keycaps. And when I actually put on the Milmax sockets, it was just the hardest thing to realize Oh, I can, I could have just bought, I could have just bought an entirely new keyboard for all the effort I've done. It was a pain. I streamed it for six hours. I thought I was going to be done in two. No, 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 no. Just to Milmax the keyboard, it took me six hours. And this is a 60%. This is not a full keyboard. This is not even a TKL. It's a full 60 it took me six hours. And then I realized after going through those six hours that it was all skill issue. I didn't know how to use the desoldering pump quite right. Ugh. Okay. Okay, I don't hate cookies. I just find them interesting at best. And they call too much attention. Okay, they are satisfying. Fine. I've actually had that time where I feel like clickies are satisfying it's just that every time i'm working i get distracted by the clickies and how they sound that i stop working and all i do is and that's all i do i just start clicking on the keyboard for no reason so i had to stop using clickies period for work but when i'm not at work this is fine this is fun if you have time to waste just get a clicky keyboard and smash your hand into it. Just go, like, just. 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 
feel the little clicks in your hand. I don't know. I feel, it, it feels one of those weirdly, oddly silent. It's like popping bubble wrap, except it's infinite bubble wrap because it never truly pops, so to speak. So yeah, I don't know. I find it a little fun to actually just, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I actually find it fun to just go, There. Yeah, anyways, before I get distracted, <laughs> before I get distracted, like I said, I would, let's actually go into what's it called? Into the typing test for the Ducky 1 2 Mini with Milmax sockets. That way, we can test to see how clicky sound on it this time. Okay. And then we might do a tape mod. I think we might do tape mod just to give it a shot. But that means I have to take everything off it again. <sighs> oh, well. Oh, well. Anyways, maybe that's for next stream. Well, we'll try next stream. Do all this again. All right. Let us go to next test. We're going to do time. 30 seconds on the clock. Regular English. Again, this is the Ducky 1-2 Mini that has been modded to have hot swap switches with Milmax sockets. And I have the Kale Coppers with, no, sorry, Kale Bronze switches. Kale Clicky Speed switches. <laughs> I don't remember which switch this is. One of them's bronze, the other one is copper. Whichever one is the clicky one is what I have on this keyboard. <laughs> and SA keycaps. Jesus. All right, 30 seconds on the clock. Let's go. I made a mistake in that last bit there. No! <laughs> All right. But yeah, those were clicky switches. Ooh, they're not too bad. I don't hate them. Um, but yeah, no, those are clicky switches at 88 words per minute on average for 30 seconds with a low of 68 words per minute. Lowest at the end there after I made a bunch of mistakes was about 54. So that's not bad. I don't really hate it. And I don't know, it feels a lot more solid, weirdly enough, putting Milmax. Because I remember when I was typing with this board, it had a hollowness to it. And I think it was the switches that were there before. Because what was the switches here before? It was, this is the caps lock, which has the old switch in it. As you can see, it is a similar switch. This is the non-clicky version of the same switch. So it's either the bronze or the copper. I forget, unfortunately. Let me undo that. All right, so this is the old switch. I think it's literally just the switch itself, which creates a lot of that sound. And I found that with a lot of gaming keyboards, the sound of the board happens to do a lot with, or happens to do a lot. That doesn't sound right. Happens to be affected a lot by the switches that are on them. And I noticed the old ones, they are not lubed. So that is one of the things that I, I don't know. If they were lubed and had tape mod, they would sound much, much better. And a lot of the newer keyboards, especially from ROG apparently, have both a tape mod and foam inserts. Ducky also is a gaming brand with their three versions of this exact same keyboard actually has filters in between or foam bits in between that make them sound a little solid. They make them sound solid. They don't sound like a reverby mess and they don't sound plasticky in comparison. They still sound somewhat plasticky, they just sound like a more solid plastic is the difference. All right, but let's actually go into the quote. Let's type out the quote. Oh, 
Okay, Kung Fu Panda. This uh, this sounds like Mr. Miyagi. This is a very Mr. Miyagi kind of take here. All right, let's <clears throat> let's see. How long have I been going? Almost two hours. Jeez. Hmm. Ah, clicky switcher. All right. <clears throat> As you can see, let's go with this quote. Your mind is like this water, my friend. When it is agitated, it becomes difficult to see. But if you allow it to settle, the answer becomes clear. Okay, so yeah, this is actually one of those things that I have found recently where when you are in a panic state, you don't see things as clearly as you think you do. And a lot of the times when you're in a panic state, you try to calm down and you don't know whether you're calm down or if you're in a panic mode. But it's one of those things where if you have someone that can tell you, oh, by the way, you're panicking a little bit. Calm down. You're good. You're fine. You have some time. Take some time. You're good. You can keep going. But some people aren't like that. Some people just go, oh, no, I have to. I have to go things. I have to do it quicker and I have to do it faster. And then you end up agitating the water and you don't see clearly as well. So there is that. And I don't know, I, what was an example in my life where all I, I was literally in my panic, I made a bad decision. I think I already told this story previously, but no. Yeah. In my panic. Um, oh my God. I don't have any panic stories. Do I even panic at this point? Jesus. Oh yeah, in my panic, when I was doing a couple tests, and, well, tests, I was being a little lazy and I was doing tests really slowly. And they told, oh yeah, I have five minutes left before you have to hand in your papers. And I literally went, oh my God, I literally didn't finish half of this entire test. So I kept going, 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 going. And whoa, I made so many mistakes. <laughs> I would have been better off answering a few more questions correctly, then doing the rest of the exam practically filled and riddled with mistakes. And that's one of the few things that I really wish I did when I was younger, where I would have taken the time to rest. And I think, who was it? Teppo Hapoya from YouTube actually said that, take your time to taste the coffee. Or was it Ali Abdul? Or Matt Diavella. Well, one of those productivity gurus, um, make sure you're doing, and productivity motiva motivational gurus. Um, they were saying, of course, to make sure, make sure to take your time and, oh, let's put this over here. Let's put this over here. Yeah, all the switches from all of the things. There you go. So, yeah, they, they were saying, make sure to take your time when you actually go and do things. Because a lot of times we rush through life and we don't realize the things that we're doing. And the, the phrase, and I'm paraphrasing here. The phrase, make sure to enjoy your coffee or take time to enjoy your coffee just means slow down, take a look at what you're doing. And... When you drink coffee in the morning, I know a lot of people do it for caffeine. Some people do it because they like the taste. Swirl it around in your mouth and go, Hmm, this is nice. This is nice coffee. I like this type of coffee. And maybe one of these days, you'll actually think to yourself, maybe I'll enjoy different types of coffee. Maybe I'll enjoy it brewed in a different way. Maybe you get to think a little bit outside of what you would normally do. If you're there every day, with time to yourself, allowing yourself to think, just sitting there. It's one of those things where it it makes sense to actually take time because later on, you might not have the time to think. And when you are calm, you come up with the most insane ideas those times where a lot of people come with their best ideas 
when they're taking a bath like or taking a, you know a dump or in the toilet or during their morning run it's when you allow yourself to get bored that's when ideas come to your head i know it's difficult because a lot of times even me when i have ideas it just keeps coming and a lot of them are absolutely horrible some of them are horrifying and some of them are just plain terrible but a lot of those ideas can stem from oh issues that will happen later on it doesn't have to mean that you can't solve them if there are issues with the idea that you're having does it come with a solution or does your solution come with a problem that you need to find another solution for and that's what creates those weird creative ideas because you're creating a solution for a problem but that in itself is a, there's a reason why people haven't come up with that solution is because previously there was no way to create a solution for the problem it creates to solve another so, uh, problem therefore it takes some time for you to think, think about it and go through and do it but that's pretty much it so we're gonna do i think one last switch here we're gonna do the blues anyways do we want to do silence i think silent switches are not too bad we can try silent switches uh i don't hate it um i prefer silent switches especially when i'm working for example my keychron k6 on the side there actually is using silent helio switches from zeal pc they are actually quite nice once lubed and i think these zeal switches also would be nice once they're lubed and I'm kind of curious to see how these perform with silent switches in them. So we're going to try that out instead of the blues, which are clicky switches, and see what we can do from there. But otherwise, I think this is it. Alright, let us take this out. And we'll Oh, why do I have this on? don't need that that's fine all right so now let us see where we are at awesome yeah no that's the weirdest thing ever for me where i've come from doing a lot of stuff and affording a lot of stuff and now i can't afford a lot of stuff it's kind of sad honestly but it is what it is i don't uh regret everything i do in life. i, I kind of do regret a lot of things i did in life previously <sighs> especially when i was oh right i was depressed uh, that kind of goes with the saying that we have here when i was depressed i was agitated i didn't know what to do i made so many bad mistakes uh i basically told myself i don't have to work i don't have to do any of this i don't want to do any of this and i forgot that i liked doing a lot of the things that I liked doing and I stopped doing them just because there's no point and I was wrong there was a point in doing all the things that I wanted to do previously and just going through the motion of hey rekindling time I had away so that's pretty much it but now I'm I'm at the point unfortunately where I kind of want to test new switches I kind of want to test new ideas but I don't actually have the time to keep doing that honestly i was supposed to be working this morning but i i was a little sick and i'm a little less sick currently and hopefully by next week i am not sick at all which allows me to actually fulfill that new year's, new year's resolution that i have proposed to myself of uploading at least one piece of content a month and the streams don't count Unfortunately, the streams don't count. And the reason the streams don't count is I don't have to make scripts. I don't have to have a specific title. For example, with these keyboard streams, I'm running out of things to do. I unfortunately am running out of things to do. I will definitely mill max the keyboard. I might ask my friend to see, hey, by the way, hey buddy, I know that you have a silent keyboard and you like your silent keyboard. Would you like me to mod your keyboard so that it is either hot swap or a little more silent? If you'd like that. And I think he's fine with his current setup because I think he has silent reds or silent blacks. I can't remember which one. I believe it's silent reds. And in the meantime, he can borrow one of my keyboards 
to be able to try that out. So even this one is a 60% and he, I believe, runs a 65% keyboard. Therefore, it's not too different and I might be able to loan him this specific keyboard. It is also hot swap. So now this could be potentially a loaner board that I would actually give to friends if they want jobs done on their keyboards. Unfortunately, if, if I were to take clients at any point, then probably not a thing that I would do where I would be like, oh, here's a loaner board. You probably have a loaner board. If, you ha if you're sending in a keyboard, to to have work done on it you should have another keyboard at the side you don't want it's kind of like saying hey by the way i'm not a dealer right <coughs> i'm gonna sell you this keyboard and uh while you uh i'm gonna repair your car sorry i'm gonna repair your car however while you don't have the car because you know you've been a customer with us for a long time let me just give you this car as a loaner key but we're gonna trade it up all right, this sounds fine to you. All right, this sounds fine to you. But no, you don't do that. I play D&D, &D, by the way, so that's not racist or anything. I'm just, you know, pretending to be a DM for a little bit. I don't know. Where this definitely is one of the boards that I think would kind of be worth it to give a shot. Because he used a Razer keyboard that was clickies. So unfortunately, he was not too pleased that he got annoyed by the clickies. He didn't get distracted by the clickies because he thought it sounded nice to just like press the board and like <laughs> um, I do. I do. I find it I kind of find it fun and uh, nice. Some people don't, but I do find it nice. And he found it distracting, especially when doing any typing, that the the keys were making the clicking sound. So, he decided, no, I need silent keyboard. And I had a silent keyboard, so he bought it off of me, and he goes, oh my god, this is so much better. What the hell? Why didn't I know about this before? And I was like, um, yeah, there are things. He previously hated mechanical keyboards just because of that. He was like, oh no, I don't want mechanical keyboards because um, it's not silent enough. They're silent enough. The problem was that the the keys that he bought were clicky. And I remember reading a review off of Amazon. It was the most ridiculous review I've ever heard. <coughs> it's like, this keyboard is horrible. It makes a clicking sound every time I press the button. I, I hope, it, I wish there was only one button. I thought only one button was broken, but all of the buttons were broken. They all make a clicking sound. Do not buy this keyboard. They make a clicking sound. And I look at the the keyboard she bought or they bought. It was a it was a blue keyboard, aka Cherry MX Blue. AKA they bought the clicky version of a keyboard and said this is a bad keyboard because it makes a clicking sound. What? Yes, it's supposed to make a clicking sound. That's the whole point. You make the clicking sound. Oh, Jesus. How did you not realize this when you bought the keyboard? It should have said that it's exactly what it was doing. Oh, my God. This is getting to the point where it is annoying. I might have broken these ones, unfortunately. I feel like I broke these ones. Come on, plates. Okay. The plate looks like it's oh don't 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 you dare. I right, push the keyboard away. How dare I? Okay. There we go. There we go. This feels like it's correct. Yeah, no, I think I've burned these a little too much, unfortunately. It's not the best job I did in the world, these soldering these um, these switches. I It was literally an actual skill issue because I didn't have a problem when desoldering this board. It was just the previous board 
which is my sacrificial board to see if I can still desolder the a keyboard. And I could. I, I wasn't too bad at it. It was just uh, a problem of I was so rusty that I literally did not actually know what I was doing. It was that bad. I actually simply didn't know what I was doing. Like, actually. But I would not... Ooh. That is silent. I'm, I'm basically... Just for you guys to hear it. Because I have a noise gate at, oh, wait, oh, I think, minus 50, which is basically a whisper. Yeah, because normally my mic picks that up. Hey there, Bowie. How is it? Oh my god. But yeah, it's just one of those things where I'm like, silent keycaps or silent switches are a big godsend, especially if you work in an office. And it's one of the reasons why I went with silent keycaps. Going into an office environment and actually using regular clicky key uh, switches, horrible, horrible thing. How dare you? How dare you use that? <laughs> Yo. Oh, about to sandblast your case and re -ano it. Yo, that actually sounds cool. How are you annoying? Are you, is this like a garage anno or having it sent in? Because I know anodization is going through electric currents to create an anodization, anodization, anodization layer on top of a piece of metal, therefore increasing its, what's it called? Increasing its rust resistance. Just because there is a layer of technical rust already on it. And that it's a very specific rust as far as the TLDR that I've heard goes. Yeah. Uh, and then sandblasting it as well to give it a nice textured finish on top. Do you have to sandblast? Uh, owns a company. You've done it garage more before, but for something like that, you want it professional. Oh, okay, okay. Did you create the case yourself there, Bowie? Or uh, what case is it specifically? Oh my god. There we go. Yeah. For office uh, keyboards? Yeah, no. For office keyboards, uh, definitely silent keyboards are the way to go. But not many people are aware that silent switches exist. So they just chalk it up to, oh, don't use a mechanical keyboard every time you go to an office because it's really loud. And they're not wrong. It's just... Mechanical keyboards have a variety of ways to customize them, so it's like, yeah. It's a Zoom TKL. Ooh, Zoom TKL, that's nice. I actually almost went for one of the um, uh, Zooms, Zoom 75. Uh, you went with the TKL. So it's, yeah, yeah, the, the Zoom 75 would be a more uh, compact version. So if I remember correctly, the Zoom TKL has a really nice solid look to it and attempting a dune inspired board okay for dune i don't i don't really watch or i've never read the dune books what's the general color scheme of dune because when i looked at a dune through any of the trailers a lot of the color scheme seems to be very how do i say it uh muted in comparison to uh, a lot of the colors out there so it's like muted browns, reds, and blues, I believe, for Dune. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Yeah, because especially something like uh, the shields that they use, I think they, they used shields where it was like a weird vibrating, fancy looking thing. And effectively, what I've heard is it's actually a force field that stops anything moving at a specific uh, rate. Which is why they use swords, because it's not over that specific rate. Therefore, allowing them to pierce someone's body, because they aren't moving fast enough to be stopped by the shields. Because it uses, apparently, the, the blue for... Oh, so... Blue, baby blue, tan, light brown, and brown. Oh, no reds? 
I could have sworn there's reds. I guess it's just a lot of sunlight or sunset shots that it's kind of make me think of reds in the, the dune setting. But thinking about it, that sounds about right. You would know more than I would. <laughs> for, uh, for especially with dune. But, damn. That sounds nice. What keycaps are you going to be putting on the, uh, on the board? Because if you're adding it, You'll probably have keycaps to match too. The drop or someone else create a uh, Dune inspired uh, set. I was not aware for of it. In if it did, it probably passed my radar. Hmm, I ran that by accident. Maybe not this one. Yeah. So that sounds pretty good. So what's the act or what's the anno actually gonna be? Is it gonna be the baby blue or? Mm, I don't remember tan being a color you can do with anno though. So it's probably one of the blues. Oh, you're so you're planning to have it blasted. <laughs> all good, all good. I mean, it's always nice to have a plan before you actually go go ahead and do it. Because if you can mock it up and you go, mm, probably not this. It's better than going through all that work and realizing, no, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's definitely worth the trouble of planning it, planning it out. I've done that multiple times where I go, I think this will be fine. Uh, and it's mostly because I do a lot of deck building in uh, Pokemon where I think to myself, I think this will be fine without testing it out and then just playing it, playing it in a tourney and absolutely just getting wrecked because of it. Like I would not recommend, I would not recommend it where you just go out there and try something and it's almost irreversible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't looked for keycaps too much. I'm pretty sure, depending on how big it gets, even the mainstream stuff will actually feature it, drop and all of them. But, baby blue. There's a lot of blue keycaps. I've been looking around uh, for red keycaps for the longest time, and I really wanted Hamon. For, and there is a Hamon round 2 that has been going around, but I don't really have the bandwidth currently to be able to just buy Hamon. And I really, really want to buy Hamon. But, red keycaps i have what is it called cabernet which is on the section here let me show it. yeah which is on the numpad over here from glorious i don't really like the glorious numpad but it does serve the purpose of being like a nice stream deck kind of and if i move over to let's say this you can see it as well so it looks quite nice i do like the reds and it is What's it called? It is a little lighter on camera. Depending on the color you make, also made Dalgona keycaps. Also make Dalgona. I'm not too sure. Let me look it up here real quick. Uh, I think I have this on. Okay. Whoop. Whoa, what happened here? What is going on? That's fine. Did I hit some random key that screwed things over? I probably did. Let me just look up Osumi Dalgona. Osumi, Osumi Dalgona. Ooh, beige. Oh, these are ready to buy too. That's nice. Um, yeah, unfortunately I have it cropped just so that I can see the rest of the stream. I honestly think I should just like all go all the way with it because the top part of the screen doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll fix it probably for next stream, but yeah, that looks nice. They even have coffee brown. Yeah, it's uh coffee brown latte cream and toasted white. So yeah, it's, it's a nice kit that would definitely look great on, on a, on a June inspired. Oh, that 
that's nice. I like the coffee tones. It's, it's really good. Off white, nice warm white too. Yeah, that's worth. That's worth. If I remember correctly, yeah. For some of these things, I think Osume does a lot of stuff, and some of their stuff is also in stock. Looks like at least they'll go to at this point of time is sold out, but you might actually have a good shot of getting them secondhand from someone else. Definitely interested in also make keycaps because I've seen a lot of people, what's it called, get some also made keycaps. And the package is nice and small, it's really cute. I think that is their, what's it called, that is their MO or. Um, their branding. It's cute looking keycaps. Nice and small and compact. Ow, Jesus. So yeah, no, I don't blame him. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't blame you for faking something like that. It's really, really nice looking. I would go for something similar myself. It's just I don't have any specific uh, thing, thing for it. A metal backplate? I don't know. I personally wouldn't go that far. Personally. Company in two laser etch the metal backplate. <sighs> I don't know laser etch. Do I know one personally? No, not that I'm aware of. The ones that I'm aware of mostly are um what's it called? No, do that. They're just like metal metal companies to make or make metal sheets. So not that I'm aware of for etching. What are you gonna be etching on the back of your uh, of your plate there? Just your name. Either the sandworm or the guild high highlighter. Okay. Oh yeah, no, of course. It's Dune theme, why would you put your name on it? Of course, silly me. <laughs> why bother with your name when you can put actual Dune theme? That would that's a better that's a better thing. The sandworm. Oh, the sandworm is the one that looked like the the thing from Tremors. As far as I remember. And I'm, oh, honestly, I'm going purely purely off of the few trailers that I've seen of Dune. Nothing else. I remember seeing sandworm. And apparently the sandworm is a gigantic thing and they had to do a bunch of special effects for it. Um this is not a trailer. Basically, I don't know if this was previous versions of um, of of the Dune movie or anything like that. But apparently, at one point, they had to figure out how to make the sandworm look enormous. And the way they had to do that was to get fine silica and create small replicas of the sandworm and shoot it that way. This is probably the, the old movies, and the reason for that is we, we can just CGI a lot of things nowadays. So I don't believe they would have not CGI'd an entire sandworm instead of going through the problem of faking a sandworm rising off the ground by using highly fine silica, getting a macro lens pointing directly into this little thing. And the reason they did that was actually because grains of sand are way too big because if they zoomed in it would look like boulders on this really tiny figurine so they ended up having to do finely ground silica for it to be able to look like it was sand instead of boulders coming off of this thing oh most of the art you'll be doing is from the books the books are amazing you know, I... <sighs> Part of me kind of wants to read the Dune books now. And I'm sitting here going, Man, I literally have a backlog of four books because I haven't read in a, quite a while despite the books in my shelf. Um, the books on my shelf are just my favorite books. Um, Aragon series or the Inheritance... Uh, the Inheritance ser uh, series, they call it? Or that's what Christopher Paolini calls it. And it's just basically Aragon. And oh my, dude, my favorite 
is actually Eldest, not even Aragon. Aragon's a nice introduction, but Eldest was my favorite out of all that. Everything else was great. Uh, you got an audiobook that you listen to in a car in the car. Oh yeah. That's one way to do it. Man. I've never quite gotten into audiobooks despite listening to a bunch of DD stuff. I watch what's it called? Oh my god. XP to level three and some of the stuff that they do. Uh I like there's <coughs> Sorry, the Strixhaven and currently their other stuff. <coughs> into the witch, uh, into the witch light stuff. And where am I based in the world? I am in Canada, BC. Hmm. So yeah, no, it's like one of those things where I can't get uh, keyboard parts as often as I'd like. But a lot of the vendors nowadays are doing a pretty good job in having decent stock of the stuff that was previously hard to get. And I think they're doing a lot better. So, you know, fingers crossed that doesn't, uh, that doesn't change. By the time I get enough money to go and buy a set of keycaps and key switches, right now, best I can afford are key switches. And I might do that and mill max. Because I have a couple of boards that I think I should be able to millmax, and I'll probably millmax them just so that I can get the hot swap ability on solder plates. I do have a spare of, I think, the iron 165. Was it 165 or 160? I can't remember. But I do have an iron, which I haven't really touched yet, other than going, yeah, I have an iron. It's there. In the closet waiting to be built because i'm too scared to touch it at the moment especially given the amount of inexperience i have and i was right because literally a, for a few streams ago i was actually doing that where i was having issues with desoldering a keyboard and soldering things on because i didn't know how to properly solder and desolder parts of the keyboard so now that I know how to mill max because I sacrificed this board, potentially sacrificed this board, so that I know the issues I would have when mill maxing a keyboard. This is uh, this is really good. Like I don't. Uh oh, maybe not that one. Not that one. Um, it's one of those things where it took me six hours to mill max a sixty percent, and I'll as I was doing it, I kept realizing. The farther and farther along I went, the more skill issue I was face bombing myself with because everything was easy once I figured out exactly how to do it. It was the most ridiculous thing ever. I was going, oh yeah, no, I can't do this because that. And then I realized literally two hours later because I was forced to do it anyways. Oh, I could just done it. I didn't even try is the problem. I was like, ah, oh, no. I should have tried. If I tried earlier, it would have been great. But no, I didn't try earlier. And I regret that decision. I should have just tried and failed and then learned along the way. But no, I just decided to no, just uh, don't do it. Just uh, keep going. So yeah, that's the, the difference. Oh, and this old. All right, have a nice one there, uh, Bowie. You got it. You have a nice one. Oh, and for those that don't know, the this old gaming keyboard, this is an old gaming keyboard from the better brands that make keyboards is five pin. So you don't have to clip any of your uh, stock keycaps. It's so, it's so good. Like I don't, I don't hate it. It's like, man, I, I wish back in the day I knew it. I knew what a ducky was and that I could just get a ducky instead. I would have saved so much trouble because I had to clip, as you can see, I had to clip these these zeals because they were five pin and now they're three pin just because the other keyboards, the other gaming keyboards that this was installed in was all, all of them were, yeah, all of them were actually, oh, no, I can use this one. 
were actually 3-pin. So I couldn't use any 5-pin switches in them, making them very, very hard to actually use. So, uh, very, not very hard to actually use. Making them not viable for 5-pin switches unless I clip the legs off. And unfortunately, and fortunately, not unfortunately, and fortunately, I've actually gone to the point where, oh, I can just use the... Uh-oh. This might not be working. I've actually gone to a point where it was okay to... Oh, I have to concentrate here. I just need to make sure I don't fuck this one over. This feels wrong. I don't know why. Oh, I see. One. Hmm. Yep, that was wrong. I indeed squished that. Uh oh. I squished it! It's not great! Ugh. Why? Why? Where's, where's my tweezers? I got tweezers here. So yeah, hopefully I didn't break this one. It'd be, uh, be horrible. There we go. Try to straighten that out. Hopefully, it'll work out. There we go. Try this one more time. Because I feel like... It'll be fine if I can get both the one on. Looks like it did both go through. Well, we'll find out in a bit. But we know this might be a problem switch. Looks like we're left with one. And there was a lot of gunk on this one. It looks like I removed part of the plate. So unfortunately, this might not fit into one of the Milmat sockets. So let me show you here. There. As you can see, part of the actual board, the PCB, actually might have come off so that's uh the issue there it's a little mm, i think i can just clean this off to be honest by slowly removing it um it'll pop off eventually oh yeah another a piece just came off just by doing that um might be able to put this one in if that doesn't work if not we can just swap it with one of the sections that is barely used kind of like the pipe that's one of those keys over there See? Silent switches! Not bad, not bad. Silent. Alright, so we'll see how these silent switches go. These are a lot more tactile, terribly heavy in comparison, making it slightly quieter than its other silent counterparts. For example, silent reds are quite tact uh tactile yes the silent reds a linear switch is quite tactile no they are not sir they are very linear sound reds are relatively silent and i really think that if it go gets lube it would sound much better but i wouldn't actually know is the thing so there is that might ask him though see how it goes from there Oh my god, there we go. Oh, that is upside down. Alright, finally. The silent keyboard switch test with SA keycaps. This is ridiculous. Who buys a key mechanical keyboard for the silence? Well, I do. I actually like silent keyboards or silent builds. It's one of the few things I like doing. Yeah, you feel you hear your fingers smack the board more than anything. Okay, let us go through it down. All right, Ooh, no, that one. Monkey time. We're gonna go with time. All right, 
We'll start with time. 30 seconds on the clock on again. This is the Ducky 1 2 Mini that has been mill maxed. So a mill max Ducky 1 2 Mini with um, Zeal 76 grams Xylent switches. So these are silent switches. They are unlubed and SA keycaps. All right, go. K is not working. K is not working. Uh, restart test. Actually, A via. Let us do a keyboard tester real quick. Key tester. Yeah. All that works. Backspace works. Tab works. Pipe doesn't work. Enter works. K doesn't work. Caps lock doesn't work. We've already established that. C doesn't work. Right shift works. All three of the bottom work. And space. So we need C, K, function works, I'm pretty sure. All right, so C and K are having issues. I'm gonna unplug that real quick then. Oh. C and K are having issues. What are keys that normally don't get used? It's these two. These two, this is bracket. Sharp bracket, I guess. One and two. And we can remove these guys. Oh, I see this one now. All right, so this one has a bent pin. So we can actually fix this one by unbending the pin and ensuring that they are completely straight before trying to socket them back in and seeing if they work this time around. So as long as it seats properly, shouldn't be much of a problem. You can plug that back in. K now works. C does not. Let's take that guy off. Bent pin as well. Oh dear. How does that get bent in that position? What the heck? All right, so this is bent in the most awkward way possible. How is that even possible? There's barely even a stub. Uh, did it just stab itself into the plastic? I can't. Oh, no, I think this is going to be broken, period. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's gonna be broken because the inside, on the inside, I don't know if you guys can see that. On the inside, it is twisted. So it actually got pushed in. All right, let's give this a shot. So pipe is fine. We don't really need pipe pipe. So we're good with that. We're just gonna try this one. See if this goes well. That doesn't load well. Okay, we're having rebound rebounds issues. Okay, you're fine though. It's fine though. So pipe is what's missing. CK is fine. All right, so now we should be able to just type. Caps lock was broken previously. This is fine. This is screwed. This might be fine. All right, let's give this a shot. We have one screwed keycap and hopefully we're not gonna screw this one up. That works. And this last one over here. Uh-oh, come on, get in there. Nope, I feel like I'm bending something. Am I? No, it's just really dirty. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. 
All right. See if we can get this cleared up. It should work once it's clear. And that's pretty much it. There we go. All right. <clears throat> that is relatively clear. We should be good to go for now. Okay. There we go. It works. Bracket is back in the business. There you go. All right. Now we can actually get back to the typing test. All right. Again, this is the Ducky 1 2 Mini that has been Milmaxed correctly. Milmaxed correctly with the Zealy, the Xylent switches. So silent version of the Zelia switches, 62 grams, they are, uh, 62, sorry, 70, 70 plus grams, they are silent, unlubed, and let's give this another go. Seventy-two words per minute. Ah, oh, so close. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Oh my god. All right. Let's go with another. This is Dutch. Yeah, it's not going through. Yeah, let's stay on this one then. All right. That seems not bad. So that's what a silent keyboard sounds like with a hot swap board. That's not too bad. It's pretty silent. I don't like the clickiness on this right-hand side. It's a lot more silent than other keyboards. So there's a plus, especially with the backspace too. <clears throat> so I don't hate it. I don't hate it as a sound keyboard. You barely hear that. I have to slam the keys for you guys to hear it. Yep. All right. Let's go with a quote. All right, let's go. Oh. Oh no, what did I miss? The period? Probably the period. All right, <clears throat> the quote is from the poet X. I don't know if this just means an anonymous poet or someone else. All right, she knew, since, she knew since she was little, the world would not sing her triumphs, but she took all of the stereotypes and put them in a chokehold until they breathed out the truth. So. The world would not sing her triumphs. And yes, this is true with anyone and everything. A lot of the times, a lot of people believe, I've seen this happen in social media quite often where they're like, I deserve to be this. I deserve that. I work so hard to be able uh, to only get fired. I work so hard to be to not get paid. I work so hard. Why didn't this work? Working hard and working effectively are two different things, unfortunately. So here she, but she took all of the stereotypes and put them in a chokehold. Put all of the stereotypes. She took the information she knew 
and she believed was probably wrong, put them in the chokehold, held it accountable, and breathed it out until they breathed out the truth. Yes, because I, I remember saying this, that uh, a lot of people have that misconception that Asians are good at math. No, Asians had a better schooling system for math than North American students did. Therefore, they were able to do crazy things that North American students weren't able because they did it just two to three years prior before the North American students did, making it much more difficult for the North American students than, of course, the Asian students. So there is that. And there's, of course, um, there is, what is uh, another stereotype? The stereotype that in Canada, it always snows. Right now, it's terribly, terribly cold. It's not snowing hasn't snowed the entire December. We were hoping for an early snow, but unfortunately it didn't happen. So for some skiers, they're a little disappointed that it wasn't as good as they it could have been. But right now, it looks like board or snow season is open and a lot of people are loving the ability to be able to do so. So yeah, it's it's great for those guys. Um, and put them into a chokehold and they breathed the truth. Yeah, so there is some truth in a lot of the stereotypes. For example, even the old wives' tales, right? Um, if you've heard the old wives' tale of, oh, stop, don't, uh, don't sleep in front of the air conditioning or the fan, you will get sick. And so some people actually go and sleep in front of the fan because it's really hot, so who cares? I'm, I'm not gonna get sick. It's, it's an old wives', wives tale. They're not wrong. The reason you actually get sick from something like being right next to a an air conditioner or a fan because uh sorry where was i jesus my my brain just ran out anyways <laughs> anyways yes uh the reason why sleeping in front of a fan or during with a fan on pointing to yourself does get you sick or increases the likelihood of getting you sick is because now you are intaking a lot more air. Normally, the air is relatively stagnant and it slowly drifts towards you, but now you are taking an, an, a volume of air which has bacteria, dust, and all these other viruses that exist in the world, and you are churning through them, getting shotgun blast by them constantly for about three to five hours of just constant it's like no 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 you that's how you're gonna get sick that's why you get sick old wives tales they make sense back in the day because there was a reasoning behind it and instead of explaining precisely why they just gave you this analogy for example in the camera industry or the film industry a lot of people that I watch, especially in YouTube, be like, no, it's always double the shutter speed. If you want it to look good, you want to have double shutter speed. What if the guy who thought of that, you want it to look good, you have to double the shutter speed. Before, that's 24. Therefore, it is 40, uh, 48. 48 or 50 for the shutter speed. So 1 50th of a second, you are doing 24 frames per second. So you want the shutter speed to be 1 50th of a second. What if... That was just his way of remembering what number he had to set it at. It wasn't to be cinematic. It wasn't because it looked better, specifically double. It's just he realized that it was roughly double the count. And the easiest way for him to remember was set the shutter speed to double the frame rate. What if that was the case? It was just him remembering it. Because a lot of people, I think Gerald Undone has done this, where Gerald Undone has done, yes, Gerald Undone did a test, there we go, where he used different frame, ra uh, different frame rates and also different uh, shutter speeds to see if it makes a difference. And yes, it makes a difference. If you want that cinematic look, you can still achieve it at 30 frames per second or even 60 by changing the, the shutter rate. So if you actually want that cinematic look but have a high frame rate, Put it into 50. Put it into where there is some blur. Like you can see this. There is a certain amount of blur. If you see a little bit of blur, that is quote unquote cinematic. Even though this is 30 frames per second, you see blur. You can see blur. It's just that you want to know what are the extents of the blur 
at how it goes. If it's just this bit of movement, it's fine. If it's this, it's different. Now you can see weird lines. So the shutter speed is too much. You can see the actual section where it cuts off. So there is a difference where knowing something or using a tail to remember something and understanding why that tail exists are two different things. So if you are listening to Old Wives Tale, there was probably an old reasoning or adage that was used to remember it. And there was a reasoning behind to why people did that. But of course, people didn't quite understand it back in the day. So that's the best way they could have explained it. But that is it for today, unfortunately. And tomorrow, I'll be doing some sort of game stream. I don't actually know what type of game stream I'm going to be doing. But I do know that I will be doing a game stream. That is for sure. Um, what type of game? I have no actual clue. Because I'm just going to go through my backlog. Um, it's Tomorrow is backlog day. And then, actually, no. I, I, I think I'm going to change it up. Tomorrow, I'm doing Mario Kart. Tomorrow, I'm doing Mario Kart No Mushroom Run. So I'm doing time trials against a Nintendo staff ghost, trying to beat them and effectively win by beating them. And unfortunately, I've already hit a roadblock on one of the tracks where it seems like I need to go into speedrun tactics to even beat it. And literally by swapping my cart to the speedrun tactic one, I have already broke a couple records, which is like, well, <sighs> makes sense. That's why they use it in speedruns, of course. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing that. And then on the Wednesday, that will be the day where I'm going to do weird things. It's the experimental day, but effectively, that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing keyboard streams, then I'm going to do Mario Kart streams. Uh, I do apologize to a lot of the people that are mostly here for keyboard streams i know i used to do them twice a week but the problem is i'm slowly running out of things to do and doing it twice a week uh, makes it me run out of things to do faster so doing it once a week makes it much more consistent but also make sure that i don't run out of things to be able to do with the keyboard and even right now i'm waiting for more milmax sockets i'm out so in order to milmax the other ducky board I'm, I'm just waiting at this point. So whatever that comes in, I suppose. And other than that, I'm going to be just testing switches and maybe desoldering my other board. So yeah, there's there's that. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. Um, next, oh, We'll be doing more keyboards next week, same time. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys have a nice evening. I will see you guys next time. And of course, have a nice one. I'm Enthusiast Naka. Uh, it's uh, short for something that you that, that I'm not even gonna bother. But I'm Naka. Have a nice one.